This presentation is entitled Key Features of a 5G Network. My name is Professor Andrew Nix and I head up the Communication Systems and Networks Group at the University of Bristol. This talk was originally given as part of a panel discussion at the LTE North America 2014 show. 5G networks need to address the spectrum crunch. Capacity is doubling every year. We're rapidly running out of spectrum, particularly in the microwave bands. We need to utilize small cells known as densification. And we need to share networks, particularly through the use of virtualization. Below 6 GHz, we have less than 1 GHz of total bandwidth to offer our wireless services. But if we look above 25 GHz, we can find somewhere in the order of 13 GHz of available spectrum. This can exist in bands such as 28 GHz, 60 GHz, and the 70 to 80 GHz lightly licensed bands. We also need to use the spectrum we have more smartly. We need to offload traffic as rapidly as possible onto alternative radio standards such as Wi-Fi and Ygig. We also need to leverage the millimeter wave spectrum for both backhaul and cellular access. The problem with millimeter wave bands is that path loss is proportional to the square of frequency, so we see much higher losses and therefore need much more directional antennas. We need better channel characterization and we need new standardized channel models in order to understand these new bands. So what do we currently know about the new 5G networks? Well, we certainly know that Wi-Fi and LTE Advanced will be core components, but they'll be much more tightly integrated. We know that multiple antenna technologies will be utilized at the base station and, more importantly, at the handset. We know that rural performance will remain a significant challenge because there's insufficient dedicated UHF bandwidth in these areas. We know that the millimeter wave layer will provide radically enhanced capacity but this will be limited mainly to urban environments, both indoors and outdoors. We know there'll be a separation of the data and control planes. This will even spread across different radio standards. We know that dynamic offloading will be used for both the Wi-Fi and the millimeter wave hotspots, and that this will be agnostic to the higher layers. We know that there'll be guaranteed low latencies, supporting what is known as the tactile internet. And we know there'll be a significant reliance on SDN and network virtualization. So what are the predicted capacity demands for 5G networks? Will data rates be capped or will they be unlimited? Well, the one gigabit per second minimum target is often quoted for the millimeter wave layer of 5G networks. And at this rate, you could download 15 gigabytes in just two minutes. But what kind of cell capacities are we looking for? Well, some of the latest predictions using our simulators at Bristol are showing that in the higher frequency millimeter wave bands, it's possible to achieve median rates somewhere in the order of 15 gigabits per second per cell. You can also see from the figure on the right hand side that the amount of capacity that we can achieve in this cell is directly proportional to the carrier frequency. So as we reduce to, for example, um, 28 gigahertz, median capacities drop to somewhere in the order of six to seven gigabits per second. If you'd like to know more about some of the details behind these simulations, then I refer you to the Globecom workshop paper and it's cited at the bottom of the slide. Let's talk a little about some of the research challenges. First, I'd like to talk about applying SDN concepts to the wireless channel. As you can see from this little animation, the channel changes rapidly in time, in frequency, and also in space. So where should we perform the link adaption? Where should radio resource management be performed? How exactly should the scheduling processes be done? Should this be done close to the radios? or should this be done back in the core network? How also do we abstract fundamentally different types of radio technology so that they appear as generic bit pipes to the core network? So to end, what technologies will be crucial for 5G? Well, I think this list could be very long, but for me, I think cost-effective MIMO, beamforming, and user tracking will be very important in the millimeter wave bands. Also, what do we do with the handsets? How do we apply multiple antenna beamforming into the user equipment? In the microwave bands, massive MIMO has huge potential. It can offer unprecedented spectral efficiency and mean that we leverage the scarce radio spectrum available to us very effectively. And SDN, as I mentioned earlier, dynamic adaptation and the support for a single content flow over heterogeneous radio pipes. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more, Please also take a look at my presentation 5G Unleashing Millimeter Wave Communications, 
which was also presented at the LTE North America show. Okay, that's the end of this presentation. I hope you found the content useful.